Hello friends, this video on human health and diseases part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to discuss in detail about this deadly disease which have killed millions and that is AIDS. So what does AIDS stand for? AIDS stand for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. So let us try to understand the meaning of each of these terms. Acquired, that means this disease is acquired during the lifetime. So it is not a congenital disease. So it is acquired after birth. So it is acquired after birth during the lifetime. Now since it is acquired, so there would be ways to prevent it as well. Okay, next is immunodeficiency. What does that mean? That means the deficiency of immune system. So what happens in this disease is that the immune system itself is targeted and the immune system becomes weak. So there is deficiency of the immune system. And syndrome, what does this mean? Syndrome refers to a group of symptoms. Now, this disease has multiple symptoms. Now, you can understand it very clearly that if the immune system itself becomes weak, what will happen? Even if there is small, small infection, even if small pathogens attack the body, there is nobody to protect the body. So, it is something like if you do not have the security guards outside your house, then what will happen? Even if a small thief comes, he will be able to steal things from your house because there is no security guard at all. So that is why in this case also due to the deficiency of immune system, the body is not able to fight back for any infection and multiple symptoms arise due to different types of infection and this is known as AIDS that is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So AIDS was first reported in the year 1981 and thereafter till now it has killed millions of people. Now, uh, no proper treatment or no proper cure of AIDS has still been uh, found out. However, research is still going on to find out some way to treat AIDS completely. However, some partial treatment is available which is just to increase the lifetime of the patient. But the patient has to die because the immune system is becoming weak. So the medicines can only help in increasing the lifetime or increasing the longevity of the patient. That's all. So the pathogen which causes AIDS is a virus and it is the HIV that is human immunodeficiency virus. Now since it causes deficiency of the immune system so that virus is named as HIV or human immunodeficiency virus. Now, the most important part that is the transmission of AIDS. Now since this is a this is such an infectious disease which doesn't have a complete cure. So it is very important to understand how this disease gets transmitted so that precautions or prevention can be taken so that the disease doesn't happen to most of the people. Now let us see how it uh, gets transmitted. Sexual contact is one important reason. So sexual contact with the infected person can transmit AIDS. So therefore it is very important to get an HIV test done of your partner before having an intercourse. And this is also a reason why it is always advisable not to have multiple sex partners because if somebody is having sex with multiple partners, the chances of uh, AIDS getting transmitted is more because you don't get to know who is HIV positive and who is HIV negative. So contaminated blood transfusion that is you would have seen that during many accidents or any other surgical situations sometimes blood transfusion is required so blood is transferred from the body of one person to another person so if blood transfusion takes place from a, an infected person to a normal person then the normal person also gets AIDS because in the blood you have those HIV virus infected mother too and that is the reason why before blood transfusion HIV tests need to be done so that is a must. Infected mother to child during pregnancy now during pregnancy placenta connects the mother's uh, body to the child's body so there are chances that uh, the child also if the mother is HIV positive there are chances that the child can also be HIV positive however it is not necessary that the child will be HIV positive the, it is also possible that the mother is HIV positive but the child is still HIV negative so that is also possible 
infected needles now this is very dangerous now what sometimes what happens is uh, people go to hospitals or clinics uh, to get different sort of tests done so the needles which they use sometimes if the needle has been used already used on a person who is infected with aids and if the same needle is used on again another patient there are chances that uh, aids might get transmitted that's because uh, what happens is the needle still might have some germs or some viruses which cause AIDS. That is why it is now advisable to use disposable needles at all hospitals and clinics. So you should never visit an, a hospital where disposable needles are not being used because these are extremely dangerous. Now the question is how HIV caused the infection? How this virus actually caused the infection? What happens even after the virus enters inside the body. So HIV is a retrovirus. Now this is a new term again. What is a retrovirus? Let us first understand this. So retrovirus is an enveloped virus that replicate in a host cell through reverse transcription. Now by now all of you know what is transcription. Transcription is the process in which RNA is synthesized from DNA. So DNA to RNA that is known as transcription but here in this case we are talking about reverse transcription so why are we talking about reverse transcription because we are talking about viruses and we know that in viruses the genetic material is RNA and it is not DNA so in viruses the genetic material is DNA so this is how a retrovirus look like inside it has the RNA code and outside it has a protein code so this is the viral RNA and this is the viral protein code. Now what happens is in case of this retrovirus, once this virus enters inside a host cell, so it enters inside the body of the host, after that this RNA will form DNA. So it is just the opposite of this process that is from RNA to DNA. So this process is known as the reverse transcription because it is just the opposite of transcription. So DNA will be synthesized from RNA and then from that DNA more RNAs will be created and that is how virus, this virus will multiply inside the body of the host cell. So that is how the HIV infection happens. Now we will try to see how exactly the entire cycle takes place. So this diagram explains you the entire process of HIV infection. Now what happens is this virus, the HIV virus, infects a normal cell. So let us suppose it comes in contact with a normal cell and it enters inside the normal cell. So this entire structure which you see, the oval structure, that represents a cell, a normal cell. And this is the retrovirus. Now as soon as it comes in contact with a normal cell, how it infects? It just enters its or it just introduces the viral RNA inside the cell. So that is how the cell, the normal cell, get infected. Now the viral RNA is replicated to form viral DNA. So here you can see RNA to DNA. So DNA synthesis happens from RNA and this process is called reverse transcription and the process takes place in presence of this enzyme called reverse transcriptase. So this enzyme plays a very important role in synthesizing DNA from RNA. So this DNA which is synthesized is the viral DNA that is the DNA of the virus. But this viral DNA incorporates in the host genome. Now inside the cell you have the nucleus. Now this is the host cell which I am talking about. So therefore this nucleus is also the host nucleus. Now once the viral DNA is there inside the host cell, what will it do? It will enter inside the nucleus. So it tries to get a place inside the host nucleus. Now what happens once it gets into the host nucleus. Now new viral RNA is formed by the infected cell. Now as soon as this viral DNA enters inside the nucleus, what will happen? The cell will consider this DNA as if its own DNA. Right? So because the cell for this particular cell, the DNA is the main genetic material. For example, in human beings, in each cell of our body, DNA is the main genetic material. So now in each, in any of our cell, if that DNA which we are thinking as our DNA is actually the viral DNA, we will not get to recognize that. So that viral DNA will be 
considered as the host's DNA and then the DNA will undergo transcription to form RNA and that is how viral RNA will be formed. So a new viral RNA is actually getting formed. So what will happen to this new RNA? From this new RNA, new viruses will be formed and these new viruses will again be released out of the cell and they will be ready to infect another cell. So this cell has already been infected with the virus. Now this virus will again enter into some other cell and it will infect that cell again from that cell. New viruses will be formed which will infect another cell. Now it is not that only one new virus is formed, multiple new viruses are formed. That's because inside the nucleus the viral DNA is there and it replicates. So they increase in number. So many new viral RNAs are formed. Therefore many new viruses are formed and all of them are ready to infect other cells. And this is how the infection spreads from one cell to multiple cells. Now this attacks the macrophages and the T cells that is the host cells. So these are the host cells. Now this host cell which we are talking about these cells are mostly the T cells and the macrophages. And what are these cells? These cells are important part of the immune system. Now when the, in, as the infection spreads what happens the immune system gradually gets damaged because the cells of the immune system are getting impacted or, or are getting infected with this HIV virus. Now gradually as the infection spreads the number of viruses keeps on increasing and the number of T cells keeps on decreasing because as the number of viruses keep on increasing the, as I said this DNA replication which is happening that is basically the viral DNA replication. So these cells are getting infected so more number of uh, viruses are being formed but the number of these T cells are reducing. Now when the number of T cells reduces, the immunity of the body reduces and as a result when the infection becomes too much, the body becomes completely immune deficient. Now if the body doesn't have any immunity, that means the body has lost its security guards. It cannot fight against any infections. So in that position, even if a small infection occurs, the person can even die because the body will not be able to fight those small infections. So as a result, even a small minor infection can lead to death. Now, no cure has been found how to make or how to bring back the damaged immune system. And that is why there is no permanent cure for AIDS. So new viruses infect other normal cells and that is how it spreads. So please understand this process, how HIV caused the infection because this is very important. This actually explains why there is no cure for HIV, uh, why uh, it, it, it is very much important to, uh, to, to take care of the precautions so that uh, a person doesn't get infected with AIDS. Now let us look at the symptoms and treatment of AIDS. Now some of the symptoms are fever, diarrhea, weight loss, minor infections can turn fatal. Now actually as far as symptoms are, are concerned, it is not necessary that the symptoms of AIDS will start appearing as soon as the body gets infected with HIV. Sometimes there is a huge time lag between the day, between the day when the infection happened and the day when the symptoms started to appear. Sometimes the time lag can be from few months to several years as well. In fact, in some patients it has been observed that they were infected almost seven to eight years back and the symptoms are coming up after seven or eight years. So that much of time lag is also possible. Now symptom, there is no specific symptoms as such, but there is weight loss. That's because when your immune system has become so weak, so minor infections cause a lot of damage to your body. The body is not able to build back itself. Therefore, uh, finally, these minor infections lead to the death of the patient. Treatment, it can be diagnosed using ELISA test that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. So this is a test which is exclusively used to detect the presence of AIDS or HIV. As far as treatment is concerned, it can be partially treated with antiretroviral drugs. That is the drugs which can act against the anti against the retrovirus. But the problem is that once the retrovirus has infected few of the immune cells, so your immune system became weak. So these drugs are only partially effective. So they cannot kill all the all the retroviruses inside your body. That cannot be done. So it, it can just reduce the number of retroviruses to some extent. So the number of HIV which were increasing so fast, maybe that speed can be brought down to a 
be, uh, below number so what would that do that would just help the patient to live for a little longer period but death has to happen so the the treatment is not in such a way that the patient can survive for a very long time so the patient has to die it is just that maybe if these drugs are used the lifespan can be increased a little bit so that's all so that's 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 why we say that there is no proper cure for aids so no cure thus it is very important to prevent it because we all know prevention is better than cure and that too when we know that there is no cure then the only option that we are left with is prevention so let us quickly look at how can we prevent so prevention of aids avoid multiple sex partners because having sex with multiple partners increases the risk of uh, getting aids transmitted that's because not every time the par partner will be hiv tested so maybe if somebody is having sex with say 20 30 partners so you don't know maybe out of those 20 or 30 people one of them might be hiv positive Confirm that the partner is HIV tested before intercourse. This is extremely important because sexual contact is the most important uh, means of contact uh, means by which AIDS can be transmitted. Use of condoms. Now, use of condoms helps in preventing uh, the transmission of AIDS. So it it should be used. Wash before and after intercourse. This also helps to maintain the personal hygiene and it also helps to prevent the transmission to some extent. So basically, uh, as far as sexual contact is concerned or as far as sex is concerned, safe and protected sex need to be practiced. Use of disposable needles and syringes in hospitals and clinics because as I told you, uh, these kind of needles were, which were they're being used with an infected person, if it is used for some other person that can cause serious issues. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.